and Flutter Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live daily show every weekday morning, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. You don't really want to hear that music. About topics related to photography, video streaming, video photography. If it goes through a camera, it is fair game. Let me turn my ears up just a little bit here. How y'all doing today? So today had a plan. It had a really good plan. It had a remarkably good plan. But you know what they say about plans. So I thought that this would be a really, you know, I thought like 45 minutes ago, this would be a really good opportunity to try out streaming at 60p. Because so I thought through the process, and I go, okay, my two main cameras I can switch, the close-up camera can switch, the um, iOS device is native 60p, 5994, so that's going to work. And Because remember, everything to go into the ATEM switcher, everything has to be identical. That can't be off by a single frame. So. That's all, and the only things that wouldn't sync were my laptop and the chat screen. I have one converter. I was just gonna kind of skip that for today, and all right, we just won't have the chat screens up because I can live without that. Um, because oddly, when they're at 60 hertz, it's, it's actually 60, not 59, 84. Anyway, so everything was in place, and we're good. I'm good, I'm happy, I moved things around, it was all good. And then I go over to the streaming system and fire it up, and I realized <laughs> that my, the ultra, mini ultra video, ultra converter, whatever the heck it's called from Blackmagic, the thing that takes my SDI signal coming out of the ATEM and converts it to Thunderbolt to go into the Mac does not support 1080p 5994. It supports 1080p up to 50 maybe, I don't know. It supports 1080i 5994. That's interlaced, that is not the same thing. But it doesn't do 1080p. And the box that does 1080p 5994 is I believe the same box that does 4K Ultra HD. So I cannot switch this show to 60p without, I mean, at that way, I can't switch the show to 60p without buying the same hardware that'll allow me to go to 4K. So um, it's a thousand bucks. It's not ridiculous. I mean, considering all things considered, and I got to make sure that that really is the one that does the 4K, but um, it's not ridiculous, all things considered, but it's a thousand dollars that I don't have right now to spend on this. So uh, we are staying at 24p for now, which is a shame because it was looking really cool at 60p, but say la vie. So today's show is a little bit haphazard, as you can already tell, but let's just take a look at what's going on in the chat room and say uh, one of the ask to everybody from here. Daddy MCC says, I might have to stop watching photo just for a while. What makes me want to upgrade my GH4 cameras to GH5? Well, then I'm doing my job. Sean Mark Nipper, hiya. Javier, Jess, Omar, everybody, I see entertainment. Joshua, look at that. Everybody's here. Awesome, awesome. Rob Janelli, hello. Jake, good morning. Trevor, cease and desist. For Photo Joseph, because his random music sounds like my intentional intentional music. That's pretty funny. Uh, really? See, it's GarageBand. Ding, 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 and it makes something, and you go, that's pretty, and yeah. I'll, I'll put real music on here, because like I said, I do. I just got to find a nice loop that I really like from Artlist. Um, Artlist.io, by the way, nice, nice service. Uh, I think I have an affiliate link for them and the things down below. Ryan, make sure we get an, I have, I did set up an affiliate thing with them and I think it's in there, but it might not be. But artlist.io is a service you pay 200 a year, I think that's right. And then you have unlimited access to their entire library, which includes all licensing for commercial projects like this. So it's kind of cool, I'm digging it. Um, Eftonics' voice, voice sounds a little bassy. Well, we haven't changed the EQ. It might just be placement because the mic is a little bit higher here. So, Ryan, you've got the, uh, remember the app is called um, X Air. You've got the app. Why don't you pull the bass down just a touch or raise the mids or not and see what people say. Quentin says, get on the horn with your friends at Epifan and ask for one of their SDI capture cards. Um, that would be SDI to USB, which would probably work fine. Probably. Maybe. Could I feed the USB? That is a cheaper solution, isn't it? Hmm, because it's half the price. Hmm. Okay, Quentin, thank you. We will We will look. Hey, let's just see. I know you guys want to get onto the show, and so do I. But, you know, this is what we're going to do. Let's go over. Let's take a look at Epifan's website, and let's see what they've got in store for us today. If we look at the Epifan website, and we pull up the converters. Paul says it sounds fine to you. Yeah, I don't know, maybe we don't need to change the audio. Um, okay, that's taking a long time to load, so we'll wait for that to finish loading. There we go. So products, and we're, we're looking for the converter boxes. Pearl, see, this is what I really want. Just give me a Pearl 2. It's only $8,000. Um, wow, we are loading slow today. AV.io 4K, that's the solution here. 500 is half the price. So this supports conversion to USB. Choose you to see if it does, uh, where's, it's gotta be a tech specs page in here. Here we go, tech specs, let's see what it supports. 1080p, 1920 by 
1080 there, and of course, Ultra, Ultra HD. Wow, it even supports DCI, that's cool. At the frame rates, 1080p, it'll do 5994, according to this, excellent. And at Ultra HD, color space, why you your NV12? Well, this is weird. Ultra HD, 510, 15, 20 frames per second. But then in color space, NV12, YV12, and I4, oh, 420. Oh, that's 422 color space. Okay, 420 color space. We can go up to 30, 29, 7, and 30, or 24, 23. Okay, good. So that should work. Good call. Good call. That would do the job that I need. So excellent. Somebody just saved me 500 bucks. <laughs> but it's USB. So that's the how reliable is that for a long-term streaming thing. I mean, it should be, right? I mean, that's kind of the whole point of it. And I do love my Epiphan. USB converters that I have now, they're just 1080p, but I don't use them going into Wirecast. Wirecast is a little finicky. Wirecast is a little finicky. I had previously had less than great luck with USB converters for the purpose of streaming through Wirecast, but that was a couple years ago, so it's time to give it a shot. Okay. All right, so uh, what are we doing today? Today we're going to take a look at this thing. Uh, you may recall a couple weeks ago I did an unboxing of this. Um, I'd link to it, but it really wasn't that exciting. I basically took it out of the box and went, look, it's a thing. And what this is, this is from a company called MacTrem. Let's get a little close-up shot of this thing. Uh, there's the close-up of this thing. Called MacTrem. It is a super wide-angle lens with macro, according to the tin. And if we take this thing apart... This looks like, I'm assuming, yep, there we go. Oh, good. I was kind of hoping that that came off. I just kind of assumed that it did. So there's the ultra wide angle part of it. So we just put that on. Um, okay, there must be another ring. There's got to be another piece because that doesn't, well, now I'm in trouble. That goes on there to make it macro. There must be another ring. We'll go look out. The, the bag thing is out there with the lens cap. I don't. All I saw was a lens cap. I don't. Wow. Um, did this have a box? <laughs> Let's go out in the main studio and see what it can do because that's the whole point of today. We've got the, the studio set up. we got an iPhone out there tethered into this. And we're going to see what we can do with like little facey close-ups, put it on both sides of the G of the uh, camera and see what happens. This is hysterical. I mean, seriously. Wow. Let's go see what we've got. There's really no extra parts laying around here, are there? <laughs> you know, I better put this into put this back together before I drop it on the way over. Oh, actually, before we do that, hold on one second. Um, before we do that, let's do this. I do need to say, to tell you that today's Photo Justice Photo Moment is powered by Fidonet.com. Whether you need a domain name, web hosting, or your own virtual server, Fidonet.com are the people to talk to. And to save 10%, be sure to use the code PHOTOJOSEPH on checkout, and we will hear more about them momentarily. Take the top one off and you have macro. The two lenses form the wide, people are telling me. Well, look at that. So maybe that is supposed to, you can't flip it. They're different size threads. See, look. Um, it didn't come with, oops, wrong one, uh, where it's close up. It didn't come with instructions, and that would be far too easy. But see, the threads are different sizes, so you can't just flip it. Um, so I guess, so you're saying that I have to have both on here to make it wide and take this off just to be macro. Okay, well, I'll buy that. Why not? That seems like it might actually make sense, but let's not get carried away, shall we? Okay, I'm taking this, I'm taking this, and we're heading out to the other room. I am untethered. Let's see what this does. And there we go. Oop, close, open that door. Probably not walk through the door. And, oh, I still have to reset my, darn it. Well, the air conditioning kick on? Ooh, it's cool in here. How oh, very nice. Um, sorry, I know you're not seeing me yet because I can't find that preset. Where did it go? Studio one, there we go, that'll do it. Excellent, and I can see it over there. I've got the right one up and I guess I really haven't done that yet, have I? Smart. And HDMI, let's see, make sure this is working as well. Sorry, this is like, as far as organized shows go, this is definitely not one of the winner ones, but what are you gonna do? Nope, that is the wrong one. Um, <laughs> oh, that's right, it is going through the decimator. There we go, okay, so that works. I just have to tap several buttons to switch because my macros aren't set up right. Okay, let's do this thing. Yeah, so this is what it came with. It came with a rear cap, rear cap, and it came with a lens cap. But hopefully, y'all are right, 
And to be a wide angle, you have to have both pieces on. So let's see what this doohickey does do. Let's get this over to that and get my nice, very, it's a good thing these are strong, very long HDMI cable. It's also very heavy, which is why I just pulled itself out of there. We'll try not to do that again. I'll try not to do that when I get the iOS 10 because I would like it to remain pristine for at least, you know, a few minutes. Let me turn off HDR. I don't want that popping up on there. Turn off live. We're just looking at normal camera mode. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's see what this thing looks like. We're going to switch over to that mode, and so here's standard camera mode. Um, probably not in sync anymore, but we'll have to deal with that. So this is standard camera without the lens adapter. Now I'm going to attach said lens adapter, which has a very small hole, which I really have to align ever so perfectly over that. And there we go, and that works. Okay, so there's. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna look at it and make sure it's getting a little vignetting. So you really gotta be careful of the vignetting on there, for sure, and I think we saw that before. If I switch into video, it punches into the sensor a little bit so we have less of a problem with the vignetting. But you do have to be careful with that. So there's a the vignetting, so now let's see, we should be able to get quite close, being that it's a... You just reversed it. I just reversed something. Oh, excellent, oh, look, those are our friends that were over last night. Um, let's go back to camera mode, there we go. I'll try not to hit the button. So there is wide angle with the macro lens. Uh, I can't see the screen because I'm obviously looking at this, not at this, so I have no idea if I'm in focus or not, but I'm going to assume, since this is wide angle and macro, that I can get close and do kind of interesting things. I'm curious how the distortion is on the edges of this thing. Um, I wonder, oh, I went into 1x, that was clever. Let's go back to standard photo mode, there we go. So look at that, so there's that. Now let's, uh, let's see, I'm gonna go around the sides. What happens around the sides? Does it get a lot of distortion on the sides? How's the field of view? What, what? There's a little distortion. little distortion. Here, Ryan, why don't you come here and hold this thing? That makes a lot more sense, actually, than me holding this thing. Or, you know what, here, let's do this even. Here, you come over here, you just be the model boy. Awesome. There we go. Just what Ryan wanted, oh, look. There we go, uh, reminders popping up. Let's uh, put this thing into do not disturb. Okay, so let's go back to photo mode. Here, come closer. So there's, all right, now I can see, there's some, definitely some distortion around the edges. Gotta get that thing, wow, there's some serious, well, you can get close, though. That is terribly frightening. Uh, yeah, you can really see the fisheye distortion around the edge. So let me just hold it still, take it off. Well, it is a big difference, though. That really is a significant amount of width that's going on. Um, now, his, the exposure on his face isn't that great, but I, this camera, the iPhone camera, has never done well under this lighting. Let's try and bring the exposure down a little bit and see if that helps. That does help. There we go. Leave that there. Take that back off. Okay, so that's not too shabby. I mean, I don't know, do you really want to go that wide? Let's go video. Do you want to have that much distortion? So now we're in video mode, and again, off. That's the 1X, and we go 2X lens. Ooh, that's a close-up. 1X, and then the wide. Not too bad, but you know, again, a lot, a lot of distortion there. All right, let's play with the macro next. All right, you can go back over there and see. Let's, uh, let me switch this up, and back to the studio camera, there we go. That's an awful lot of distortion happening, isn't there? That is an awful lot of distortion. Now the biggest, but I mean, I guess if you wanna go that wide, that's what you gotta do. My biggest concern is the fact that that black, the edge of it gets in so easily, it's really hard to get that thing into place. I mean, hard, you gotta be very careful. And given that this thing simply clips on, especially with the iPhone 7 Plus, is all, do the 7 have the bump as well? I don't remember. Does the 7 have the bump? Any camera, any phone, smartphone with a bump camera seems like it's even less likely to stay put because the way this thing works, there's this little rubber kind of sticky bit on here. Not sticky, but you know, anti-slip thing. And that would, if it, it was, if it could grip on the entire phone, it'd be like, that's a lot more stable. That feels good. But here, that's, that's wobbly. I'm not so sure that I would recommend this for an iPhone with a bumped out camera, I must say. Hmm. Uh, and let's try the selfie. Let me put it on the selfie side and see what happens. Let's switch the camera around to selfie mode. And we'll switch back to your view. And so now we're selfie viewing this thing. Let's put this on. That's a little bit better. Let's bring the brightness down a little bit. That's not too shabby, and that does hold on tightly. So I suppose if you really wanted a wide selfie, you know, you and your six best friends, you could do that with this. So that would give you that advantage. That's not too shabby. All right, let's try, let's try the macro again. Let me switch this back up. Oops. Bring this back up. Oh, I definitely have to get my 
thing switched up again. Okay, let's take off the wide adapter and let's see how close we can get. Give me something. I need something cool to focus on. Um, anything good down here? All right, we're just gonna focus on a memory card because that's handy. Oh, Luxar, may they rest in peace. Okay. Let's first do it without any adapter. Switch this back over to forward-facing camera and switch back over to the phone. And let's see how close we can get. Let's turn that around. So I'm just gonna go straight down. Let's try and make this fair. So we are, oh, we're in video. Let's get out of video. Let's go to photo mode. Okay, 1X. So clearly we're in focus there. And can we focus there? Mm, no, that's too close. Let me back off a little bit. Yeah, still a little bit too close to that. A about where we've got there. I don't have a, uh, I don't have a ruler I'd measure this out, but that's there's our closest distance, all right? So now I'm gonna put this on. I'll switch back to this view momentarily. What can we, it's a fist. It's one fist high, there we go. Let's put this thing on. Get it on the right lens. There we go. Is it changing the focal length? It is not changing the focal length. I should make sure it is actually on the lens, there we go. It is not changing the, it's not making any wider or any more telephoto, so that's good. And now, let's see how close we can get. We can get pretty close. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. So get closer, closer. But look at the edges. There's definitely some pretty strong fuzziness around the edges in there. How can I get even closer? Oh, I can get closer. Ooh, I can get really close. Okay, well, that's, that's neat. There you can get super close. All right, well, if you want to get that close with your iPhone. You could do worse. You would definitely have to be careful with the entire putting this thing on and having it fall off of your camera thing. Definitely not cool if it does that, but not too shabby, not too shabby. Hmm. I don't know, I think in a pinch, I think it was, I wish I remembered the price. Ryan, when I go back in there, you check the price. Yeah, you can go ahead and check, I'll be done. Um, Ryan's gonna look up the price because I don't remember what it was. This is, uh, Let's see, I would say if it's like a 20 to $30 price point, it's probably worth it. If it's more than that, I don't know. I'd see what other options are out there. The simple fact that it just clips onto your camera, I mean, I can appreciate how it doesn't require a permanent thing, right? I've seen a lot of iPhone accessories where it's like a cage that mounts to your camera and then you attach a lens to that, which is obviously very stable, but not exactly a quick and convenient thing. 1350. What is it? 1350. Oh, 1350, well in that case, it's a stinking bargain. Go buy two of them. Um, for a pinch, you just wanna get a macro, you wanna get a little bit wider shot, it's pretty good, it's not huge, but it's also not tiny. I mean, this isn't the kind of thing you're gonna stick in your front pocket and walk around all day with. Um, you know, people might get the wrong idea. So, I, it's if you're gonna have a bag, you may as well have it with you, but it's not something you're just gonna have all the time. All right, well, there you go. There's my totally unprofessional and ludicrous assessment. Let's go back into the other room, shall we? And finish up this show because daddy's got work to do today. And we gotta get ready for the next step. Okay, so there you go. There's my you know, half assed assessment of that thing. It is, um, you're getting some distortion around the edges when you do the close up for sure. It does get very, very close though, so that's, that's pretty impressive. If you don't mind getting a little distortion around it. You know, I did not switch over to the 2X lens to see how that did on the macro, but it should do pretty well as well. The wide angle, I like the wide angle on the selfie side. That's pretty neat. If you're doing a selfie, you wanna get a bunch more people into the shot. That is pretty cool that it does that. Obviously getting some big distortion around the sides though, so that is something to be aware of. You might end up wanting to crop into the shot a little bit, but overall for $13, that's pretty good. I, I'd say for $13, it's, it's a buy. If it was considerably more than that, if it was double that, it'd be really iffy and you know, over 30 or 40, I'd be really saying yeah, probably not. So anyway, so there's my assessment of that. All right, let's see what you guys think about this. Uh, but before we do that, let's talk about our sponsor again. Today's photo moment is powered by Fidonet.com. Whether you need a domain name, web hosting, or your own virtual server, Fidonet.com are the people to talk to. With access to more than 400 top-level domains, you're sure to find the right domain for your project. Or do you need to host a website? Fidonet.com are specialists in web hosting. With more than 20 years experience serving websites, the folks at Fidonet.com will be able to help you get your website online in record time and at an affordable price. Fidonet.com, where those in the know go and those who use the code PHOTOJOSEPH on checkout save 10%. And do please do go check them out. And they're obviously they've been sponsoring the show for a while now a couple shows a week. We're really grateful to have them on here. And I would really appreciate it if, even if you're not in the market for a domain name or web host right now, just 
go to FidoNet.com, check it out, poke around, see what's there, become familiar with it, and the next time you're ready to buy a domain, which I don't know about you, but I own a lot of domains, uh, you know, consider using them. And don't forget the code Photo Joseph to get your 10%. Cool? Cool. All right. Let's see what's going on in the chit chat now. What uh, JJ Giddy says? What about holding up a magnifying glass to the lens? That's a that's a funny idea. I wonder. I don't have a magnifying glass, um, but I mean, clearly it would do something. But the, there you'd have to have two hands. You'd have to be very. You're doing wait. Which what's the right distance? I don't know if it would work or not. I don't know. Because well, probably not. Because remember, a magnifying glass is meant to be used. Let's say you know I'm holding. Let's pretend that this is my magnifying glass, and I'm holding it to look at this you hold it here and your eye is here. So that would tell you the camera would have to be at a distance. If you put your eye right up to it, to a magnifying glass, I, I don't think that works. And that's kind of like, you know, Sherlock Holmes kind of movies. Oh, look, I don't think that really, I could be wrong. I don't know when the last time I touched a magnifying glass was fifth grade. And that was at least a couple of weeks ago. So I really, I have no idea. All right, let's see what else is going on in the comments. Let me scroll back up and see what I missed while I was out running around in the other room being goofy. Oh, apparently not much. Uh, all right. Make Ryan pop up and down in and out of frame. <laughs> jump monkey jump, huh, Joshua? Um, oh, you, he probably just wanted to see the distortion. Well, we, we sorry, we didn't get to do that. And, oh, Frank Levis has just bought one for my iPhone 7 Plus. Really pleased. Oh, great accessory for very little money. Oh, good. Well, look at that. An actual real user out there who is saying that he likes the product. Well, there you go. It's got Frank's endorsement. Go buy one. I mean, really, seriously, for the price, it's pretty hard to beat. Not too shabby. All right, guys, we're going to wrap it there. Um, tomorrow is going to be a the podcast-style show with any luck because we are going to gather some news stories, although I've been a little remiss about the news stories, so we'll see what happens. What Actually, you know what? Scratch that. Tomorrow's show is going to be a first look at iOS 11 because that's coming out later today. I'll be updating my devices. We'll do. We'll skip the podcast for a week because I don't even have the podcast side of it set up yet. I started it and then got distracted. So tomorrow's going to be a first look at iOS 11. That's what tomorrow's going to be. And then, yeah, and then I'm going to do what we'll do after that. Um, let's see, very quick, let's just run through a few of the little announcement reminders. We've got the contest going on right now, photojoseph.com slash contest, where you can win GH5 training or a year's membership to the Photo Apps Expert. So photojoseph.com slash contest on Friday and Saturday of next week, so September 29th and 30th, I'll be doing live events down in Los Angeles. The first one being at Sammy's Camera on Fairfax. The second one on the 30th being at Image One Camera in Riverside, and that is California. Do check that out if you're in the area. And then the last one is the pro live streaming event that I'll be doing with IBM on Wednesday of next week. So that's a week from tomorrow. And to get the registration link for that, just go into the show notes here, scroll down, see the notes, and there's a link to that. It's a weird URL, so I'm not just putting it on screen. But scroll down to that, you'll see you can register for that. And it's a, it's a webinar. It's an online thing. It's live, online, talking about professional live streaming. I'm actually really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to do. Uh, Cuisine says, when will you do more tutorial on the GH5? Um, well, allow me to tell you, how about this? It's five and a half hours of training on the GH5. Just go to gh5training.com, or you can enter the contest at photojoseph.com slash contest, and you have an opportunity to win said training. But the GH5 training is a complete five and a half hour in-depth look at the GH5, and we have several people in this chat right now who have bought it, so please, for those of you who have it, please share with Cuisined what you think of the training. And I'll just divert my eyes in case you have something nasty to say. No, I think it's been very well received. I've been very pleased with the feedback I've gotten on it. Uh, it's a complete in-depth training, so check that out, please. Um, Cuisine Delta says, I bought, the th I bought three GH5s. <laughs> Bonus. I'm having enormous issues syncing them up with timecode and the image app. Mm. Well, once they sync to the image app, they're supposed to all sync because the time clock on the camera syncs to the time in the image app. Because this is all changing, there's a new image app coming with, along with the version 2 firmware update. I'm not going to do any tutorials around the image app because they'll be obsolete in a couple of weeks or whenever it is that app's coming. So uh, it's... Stand by on that, wait for the update to come. If you're still having issues with it, then let me know and I'll see if I can do that. I'd, I'd have to get my hands on another GH5 to see syncing between two. I've never actually tried that, but in theory, it's supposed to work because your camera syncs to your phone and your phone, of course, is synced to the international time clock, hoogie, what's it, whatever. And it doesn't even matter if the time's accurate, it just matters that they're 
have the same time on them, but, uh, but they should be both accurate and the same time. That's how it's supposed to work. And Burnstack says, uh, could you buy, cause, oh, you could buy the, oh, well, Burnstack is telling you uh, to please buy the training. There you go. Hmm, Cuisine, does it talk on multicam and syncing? Oh, does the video, multi, well, multicam is not a GH5 thing specifically, right? I mean, that's more an editing thing, but I don't address how to get them in sync, no, because it's supposed to just work when you connect the app, they're supposed to sync up. So again, wait, if, you, if it's not working for you now, wait for the 2.0 or whatever version, well, the 2.0 firmware and then whatever the version of the uh, iOS app is gonna be and see what happens then. And if it still doesn't work, come on the show, let me know, I will dig into it for you. Okay. Let's do this. Let's get out of here. Uh, thank you very much, folks. I appreciate your time coming in today, as always. We'll see you tomorrow for a look at iOS 11. And uh, in the meantime, uh, i got me some work to do. Ciao.